Tech Cam. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Tech Cam video. I'm joined by Adverse Paul Morkel and Steve Pentecost to talk about some recent developments about our open line system optimized for data center interconnect. Um, Paul, let's dive right into this. What's the big news about this announcement? Well, it's a new product that we're launching. It's a new configuration of our FSP 3000 open line system uh, uh, family that's optimized around the 400 gig ZR DCI application. Um, it includes new amplifiers, new MUX DMUX filters, and a new uh, approach for integration of capabilities into a very small number of modules to support a wide range of functionality. Sounds very compelling. Um, clearly, I mean, Steve, uh, an open line system that is tailored and uh, designed to work with WDM optics plugged directly into a data center switch, that's the architecture as such is not brand new to add, but we've done this before, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think we were the people that pioneered the whole open line system concept with um, plugs into switches and routers. And we certainly had some success with the first generation 100 gig uh, direct detect solution. Uh, it was PAM4 based, so it, it made things a little bit more complicated. We needed to have dispersion compensation and other bits and pieces, but really gave us an opportunity over the last four years to understand how hyperscalers and other customers put these things into networks, how they operate them, how they automate them, and really gave us an advantage to be able to understand uh, exactly how to simplify the overall uh, network architecture. And uh, I mean, while PAM4 has been actually a commercial success as a whole, it seems 400ZR is uh, receiving a little bit more attention and, and there's some hype around 400ZR. Why, why is, is that? Well, I think the, the original um, PAM4 solution was quite complex. So the performance wasn't so good from the plugs. Uh, it required some real smarts um, on the solution uh, in order to make it work. As I mentioned earlier, dispersion compensation, high powers, uh, real closed loop control. What, what's happened now with the uh, 400 gig ZR technology is the coherence has really digitized the network. So makes it a little bit more straightforward to transmit this with amplifiers, uh, muxes and demuxes. Of course, um, still complexities with respect to management, uh, implementation, et cetera, et cetera. But it's hot now because really um, most people can deploy it. The first generation was a little tricky, let's say. Interesting. And uh, Steve, you mentioned standards. Paul, um, I think I heard you say this solution, this new generation does not only conform with the 400ZR standards, it actually outperforms what's being specified? That's true. We've done a lot of testing on the new product. Uh, the, the OIF and IEEE have, have been quite explicit on defining a number of parameters associated with the 400 gig ZR technology. Um, you know, an optimization around lowering the cost of the transceivers, lowering the thermal footprint of the transceivers, uh, that has an impact on the optical performance. Uh, things like the optical transmit power, for example, you know, is quite low compared to what we would normally have seen with transponders or optical interfaces in the past. So that's required, you know, some quite specific implementation in the line system to accommodate that. So we've designed optimized optical amplifiers. We have optimized MUX DMUX filters. These the standards define not only 100 gigahertz channel spacing, but also a 75 gigahertz channel spacing. Uh, so really dense uh, multiplexing of these 400 gig waves to get the maximum possible spectral efficiency. Um, and accommodating some of the transceiver limitations has required implementation in the line system uh, to optimize for that. And we've done that and we've tested multiple of these devices and we're getting very good performance. We, ex we exceed the, the performance limits that are defined in the OAF recommendations. And uh, you know, we're getting 26 terabits per fiber um, at, uh, at higher margin than, than was defined in the standards. It's pretty impressive figures, both in terms of total capacity, spectral efficiency. Um, you mentioned the interoperability. Um, clearly, when things go open and disaggregated, interrupt is a key factor there. Um, Steve, can you say a few words about uh, the transceiver interoperability here? Yeah, sure. 
I think, uh, you know, as pioneers of the uh, open line system standards, you know, we've had a, a bit of an advantage compared to the competition. Uh, we have good relationships with the uh, switch and router guys, but also very good relationships with the the uh, vendors that provide the plugs, uh, the third party transceivers, 400 gig ZR devices. And we've done a lot of work, uh, a lot of interoperability testing, um, <clears throat> a lot of activities, making sure that the performance is aligns with the uh, OIF standards and also that we get and exceed what we need to do from a line system perspective. So we've worked with the usual suspects, obviously Acacia in Fi. We're working with other vendors as other vendors come on board. In fact, we've got a rather nice facility uh, in Atlanta where we, we do all this interoperability testing. And I think that that's another advantage that we have against the competition. Very good uh, data points. Thank you for that. The um... I mean, Foreign ZR clearly is receiving a lot of attention, both in the media, with our customers, etc. But it almost seems like it's the open line system that is the missing link to really create a valuable end-to-end -end solution. Paul, would you agree with such a statement that the OLS unlocks the potential of what the Foreign ZR ecosystem actually uh, um, could provide? Well, it's certainly a necessary component. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole 400 gig ZR ecosystem was based around lowering the cost of high capacity transport for data center applications. Uh, the OLS is obviously a very key part of that. Um, and the fact that, you know, we've we've implemented these devices or the industry has implemented these devices, um, you know, to get the maximum possible capacity with interfaces, WDM interfaces directly on the switches and routers, it did require innovation on the line systems and that's what we've done and I would agree. I mean, it does enable the 400 gig ZR and also going forward the open ZR plus application for a wide range of operators. So we've done that, um, you know, it's clearly with performance in mind, but also with integration in mind. Um, you know, these are being deployed in data center environments that have some very specific operational requirements. And our global deployments, mass deployments, require simplified configurations, cookie cutter configurations, integrated diagnostic and monitoring capabilities. And we've built a lot of that functionality in to the product as well. So it's not just a question of providing a line system, but I think also a question of providing a line system that has a very simplified operational functionality to enable a mass, mass rollout. So I guess it sounds like while well, technology is an extremely important piece, the interrupt of working with other companies that also the pedigree as a partner and a supplier in the space plays a, an important role. Steve, I think at the beginning you said there's already been some very good track record. Um, any last thoughts about uh, that aspect of the end-to-end -end solution? Yeah, I, don't, I, I think it can't be underestimated the amount of value and experience you know, I think uh, if you look at Adva and what we've done in this space, uh, whether it be the hyperscalers or some of the smaller guys, we've certainly deployed more of these open line systems than any other vendor to date. We've deployed thousands of these in the hyperscale space, the first generation. And I think that gives us a key advantage, uh, understanding operationally, uh, simplifying things, understanding how they manage things, understanding APIs and everything else. And I think it's key when you look at the vendors and the solutions that you choose a partner that's really got that experience that you know a few years has brought to the table and it's not just about the optical layer it's about how you manage it the software you know having the capability to do the interoperability testing having the experience etc i think that was a very good closing statement thank you for that well gentlemen thank you both for your time for the additional insights and the different perspectives on this new announcement um, I really enjoyed our little conversation here. And uh, with that, um, have a very good rest of your day. Bye for now. Tech cam.